Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the Law of Attraction podcast. We are back, finally. I know last week we didn't have a podcast because, unfortunately, I had lost my voice. Uh, I'm pretty much 100% now, so I hope you missed me. Um, if you don't know me already, I am the founder and CEO of Law of Attraction Life Coaching, and I specialize in anxiety and depression and helping people to find techniques that truly change their lives for the better. So tonight I wanted to talk to you about stress, and I know that if you've been listening to the podcast, you would have already heard me discuss a few ideas about stress relief and relaxation, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about the science bit with stress. Now don't back out yet if you're thinking, that's not what I want to listen to. I'm telling you now, this is possibly one of the most informative podcasts that you can listen to tonight. In previous podcasts, you would have heard me talking about the caveman in your mind or the caveman in your head, as I like to call it. This is a description of your primitive brain and your primitive brain has been created to react to natural stresses that would have been around when we were evolving. Now, interestingly, studies say that we're about 98 to 99% evolutionary the same as what we were when we were hunter and gatherers, which is really interesting because we lead incredibly different lives to what we used to and for what our bodies were evolved for. Now, we've got two main systems in our bodies that work to keep us healthy, keep us fit, and ensure that our daily bodily activities are happening and regulated. These two systems are called the parasympathetic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. Now, the autonomic nervous system is responsible for many things, but it's also responsible for the flight or fight reaction, which hopefully you will have heard me talking about in prior podcasts. But in case you don't know what this is, the flight or fight reaction is an autonomic nervous system trigger that happens when our bodies feel that we're in times of stress that prepares us to either flee or fight. This is in times of serious danger, when we're facing a, a saber-toothed tiger or we're about to have a car accident or there's a tribesman that is trying to kill us. This is the time when the fight or flight system kicks in. Now our bodies however are only capable of creating a stress reaction when it feels it's necessary and in our present day and age that stress reaction is triggered for most things. A parking ticket, a traffic queue, your boss wanting to talk to you. Very rarely are you actually in a life or death situation when this reaction is triggered. This is a great part. We're very lucky in our present world, it, but it means that our stress reactions are left uncalibrated. Your stress reaction comes on at the most minor of things, which means for the most part of your life, you are in fight or flight reaction. But why is this important? Well, when the autonomic nervous system is turned on, the parasympathetic nervous system is turned off. They are mutually exclusive. The parasympathetic nervous system, also known as rest and digest system, it's the system that is responsible for digesting food, for rebuilding the body, for immunity, for creating balance and having the body at rest. Now, this system is turned off when the autonomic system is turned on. The autonomic system is solely responsible for creating a stress reaction in the body. It causes non-critical functions to shut down, adrenaline and cortisol to be released, muscles to contract, digestion to shut off, and your, bladders and your bladder and your bowel to evacuate. Hence that nervous poo phenomenon. The long-term results of being in the autonomic nervous system are not easy to, that, to escape. Issues can include lower immunity, type 2 diabetes, irritable bowel syndrome, sexual impotence, high blood pressure, hardening of the arteries and heart attack. This doesn't sound good, does it? Well, don't worry and don't go getting stressed about that. 
because there are plenty of ways that you can biohack your system and shut off your autonomic nervous system, turning on your parasympathetic nervous system. Now, when you turn on your parasympathetic nervous system, you get more stable blood sugars, you get better sleep, you have weight loss, your heart rate lowers, you have decreased blood pressure and better health. So how do we turn it off? Well, there are a few ways you can turn off this reaction. And the first way would be focusing on your breath. So often you'll notice that your breathing is not as deep and not as good as it should be. Now, most people breathe short and shallow breaths. I want you just to notice how you're breathing now. Are you breathing deep and into your belly? Or are you breathing short, shallow breaths into your upper chest? Now, I bet you that you are breathing the latter. You're breathing short, shallow breaths into your chest. Do me a favor, comment below. How were you breathing when I said this? Are you breathing nice and deep, deep into your belly, low, long, steady breaths? Or are you doing short, shallow breaths into your upper chest? Leave me a comment after you've listened to the podcast. I'd love to hear from you. We as a race of human beings have forgotten how to breathe. And I know that sounds ridiculous because you breathe all day, every day. But Natural, good, normal breathing is deep into our bellies, it's slow, it's steady, and it's deep down, right down into your bellies. You shouldn't be able to fill this up into the top of your chest. If you look at a baby breathing, its belly comes out and it goes in and it's nice, long, steady, rhythmic breathing. We need to retrain ourselves to ensure that we are breathing deeply turning off our autonomic nervous system and relaxing our frazzled systems. Now, breath is a key part and you can use a box breathing exercise to help yourself. Now, box breathing is a way of breathing that works like this. You breathe in for four seconds, you hold it for four seconds, breathe out for four seconds, and then you hold it for four seconds again before breathing in. Now, this type of breathing requires not only deep diaphragmatic breaths, it also tricks the body into turning the parasympathetic nervous system on. Think about it like this. You are in a flight or fight moment, such as facing a tiger. Are you going to suddenly start focusing on your breath, holding your breath and counting to four? You're not, are you? The first thing you want to do if you're faced by a tiger is probably scream and run. Okay, now your body understands this and it realizes that you can't be in any danger if you're doing something such as focusing on your breath. And so it notices this and it turns off your autonomic nervous system. So let's try this together. Let's try box breathing. So I want you to kind of shake yourself out, shake out any tension. I want you to notice whether or not your shoulders, are they pinned up to your ears? You know, roll your shoulders back, tense them up, loosen them up, give yourself a little shake, give your fingers a shake out, you know, stand up, sit down, whatever you need to do. I want you to close your eyes for me. And I want you to take in a deep breath, two, three, four, hold it, two, three, four four, out, two, three, four, hold it, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, hold it, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, hold it, two, three, four, and just breathe in normally as you normally would. How do you feel? you feel more relaxed? Were you thinking? Was your mind stressing? Were you worrying? Was it racing? I'd bet that you have begun to calm down. I bet that you are feeling a little bit more relaxed now. You can do this on your own at home and it's nice and easy. It doesn't take anything complex. You could do it at work. You know, if you're having a stressful day, go and lock yourself in a cubicle in the toilet. Sit down and, and do some breathing for a minute. So this is one way you can do things. How else can we turn off this reaction? Well, one of the things that I would recommend you if you are feeling stressed is to avoid caffeine. 
Caffeine causes an adrenaline response in the body which can trick our minds into a fight or flight reaction. This is not what you want. If you are stressed and you're somebody who's permanently stressed, which is most people these days, avoid caffeine. Now, I know you might be sitting there thinking, I can't wake up if I don't drink my coffee. Well, in which case you've kind of worked yourself into an addiction and a dependency on a chemical stimulant, which is a shame. And yes, you can get out of it. Give it a few days, come off of it, drink lots of water, try green juices to energize you in the morning. You'll feel pretty crappy for the first three three days, I promise you. That's not going to be a good, enjoyable three days. But after the three days, after you get over the, the headaches and the withdrawal symptoms, actually you're going to feel a lot better. Now, some other things you can do, try getting a massage. The relaxing stimulation of muscles can help to soothe frazzled minds. Hot baths can also help. So one of the things that happens with the autonomic nervous system when it's turned on is that you get blood vessel constriction. This is because if you are attacked by a tiger, the last thing you're going to want is a hemophiliac reaction or to have dilated blood vessels in the skin because you're going to bleed faster. So what you can do to help yourself is have a hot bath. This raises your core temperature, relaxing muscles and causing blood vessels to dilate on the surface. This again turns the autonomic system off, turns the parasympathetic system on and tricks your mind into thinking that it's relaxed. Try adding some Epsom salts or some magnesium flakes to your bath, which can help to soothe stress nervous systems and relax muscles. Magnesium is really important. And if you are a coffee drinker, uh, having high levels of caffeine in your diet causes us to deplete magnesium in our bodies. So it's a, it's a two-handed problem. If you drink lots of coffee, not only does it stimulate a fight or flight reaction, it also depletes magnesium, which is the nervous soothing mineral, the nerve soothing mineral, and something that can be really helpful to your muscles. So try taking a magnesium supplement. If you are somebody that's stressed, it will help you. Take it at night, it will calm you down. It's really good for PMS and other things as well. But focus on getting off caffeine and if you are a caffeine drinker for heaven's sakes take a magnesium supplement in the evening it will help you it will not do you any harm so what else can we do meditation okay meditation is a really key part of turning off the autonomic nervous system this again when you're sitting there and you have your eyes closed and you're not in danger the caveman in the mind goes what's going on we're supposed to be fighting off saber-toothed tigers right now. Why are they closing their eyes? Well, it realises that you're not in danger. And so it switches off the autonomic nervous system. Now, I have a collection of meditation series on this channel, and I will be adding to that as we go along. The next one that I'll be creating is a heal your inner child meditation, which is really important, but I'll talk about that another time. So keep an eye on the channel, and obviously you guys will be the first ones to hear when anything comes up. On a side note, if you would like to have any meditations made um, at a cost, you can pay £20 and I will create you a meditation CD that is just for you. So I will say your name and it can really help with anchoring thoughts and things into the subconscious. So if that's something you'd like to do, get in touch. But if you have got any ideas for any generic meditations that you'd like to hear, feel free to leave a comment below. Let me know, get in touch, and I will get those up for you guys, okay? I'm here for you, so if there's anything you want to hear about, you want me to talk about, let me know. I'll do the research if I don't know about it, and I will release it in a podcast, okay? So please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you all. So... The main thing that I want you to take from this podcast is that you are not at the will of your body. You are in control of it. And although these systems are automatic, you can turn them off with rather simple actions. You don't need to walk about in a severe state of stress all the time. And you really shouldn't because the health impacts of doing this are huge. So try and get into the habit of checking in on your body once an hour. Are your shoulders tense? Are you breathing in your belly? Are you feeling stressed or relaxed? And then when you come home, take half an hour in the evening to calm yourself down fully using a meditation or a hot bath or some yoga. 
But you really need to make sure that you are calming your system on an hourly basis. So make sure you're checking in with your breathing regularly and soothing that frazzled caveman in your mind who thinks that you're going to die all the time. Thanks ever so much for listening. I look forward to speaking to you all again next week. As I said, please like, share, subscribe, comment, get in touch with me. I love to hear from you. If you would like any one-to-one coaching, I do offer coaching uh, and you can get in touch with me via the website, which is www.lawofattraction.com dot simplesite.com or you can find me on facebook which is law of attraction life coaching and again all of these links are available in the about section on the youtube channel Um, i offer one-to-one coaching and if you're not local to cardiff where we could meet face to face then i can talk to you over the phone if you're uk based or certainly via skype or facebook if you are international so i'd love to hear from you all please get in touch if there's anything that i can help you with that is my job i'm here to coach you to excellence. So have a fabulous day, a great week until I speak to you next time. Take care of yourselves as always.